All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily Show. Many questions. What is going on in Kogi State? Uh, well, the AFCC was trying to get a hold of him to answer to charges against him, allegations of fraud involving over 80... Guys, how much is that? That's 84 a... billion naira. Well, yeah. Um, just in case you're it's not thinking done. of wrapping it down to 80, it's, there's 4 billion on top of it. Chimbley, just imagine 4 billion. <laughs> Anyways. Sometimes when you read these things on paper, <laughs> the gravity of it is, um, you know. But yesterday there was an attempt to arrest him. Yeah, uh, I... Several things occurred. There was a judgment from a Kogusa High Court saying, nope, you can't be arrested. Then the FCC said they got a judgment from a mm -hmm. federal high court saying, proceed. And so many wondering, what's going on with the courts? And then the dimension of the Kogi State governor, did they happen? What did they do? What does the law provide? So what happens if I meet Father now, senior advocate of Nigeria, joining us this morning to shed, uh, to weigh in on the matter. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. So Mr. Falana, we've seen your statement. Uh, we hope you can hear us, by the way. We've seen your statement about um, no court can stop the prosecution of the former governor. But then questions as to what then happens to that decision from the Kogi State High Court. Do they discountenance that? But God, they thought their procedure shouldn't it be vacated before they proceed. Yes, we've seen your comment, but tell us about this latest twist now, what you think of it. Mr. Falana, can you hear us? If you can unmute, so we can, you can uh, go ahead and speak. Okay, so we'll try and get him back on that and uh, see how consider. So the images you see there, uh, the residence of former governor of Kogi State, Jaya Bilo. So questions as to, yes, they said, look, no court, provided certain things are done. If there are substantial cases of allegation established, the court can proceed to do that job. But the Kogi State High Court, what happens to that? And then the role that the Kogi State governor is said to have played in all of that. So many questions as to how the commission proceeds. The commission themselves say they will arraign him when? Thursday. That is a statement that the commission put out, that he'll be arraigned Thursday. So you have many scenarios as they are unfolding. So is he resisting what? Arrest and prosecution or is he simply complying with the court orders? What about the policemen who were there as well? So some of those roles that they played, who is to do what? But because Mufalana also did write saying the IGP should be seen to take stern measures mm -hmm. against some of those policemen because he thinks that they did something against the law. Mm -hmm. How do we proceed from all of that? Should the IGP be speaking about now or should he have spoken before now? Will he speak on the matter? Those are some of the issues that are bothering a lot of people's minds this morning. So, Chim, in before now, we had seen, um, you know, former government officials or people who had occupied elective office try to evade arrest or, you know, prevent themselves from being arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, some of them have also come from Kogi State. I mean, we've, we've seen scenarios whereby people just hold themselves up in their homes and they refuse to come out and the operatives have no choice. We also saw in the case of former governor of Imo State, uh, Rochas Okorocha, yep. when the EFCC wanted to arrest him, they stopped at no level to get him out of the house. They went through the roof of no. the house, Chamberlain, if you remember. But this scenario is so a little different. They couldn't go through the roof in this it's, one. It's, it's, it's very interesting because in this instance, it is policemen. The policemen who have been put in charge of the, or, yeah, who are guarding the, uh, the former governor are the ones who have now prevented EFCC officials from effecting an arrest. The only other time we've seen this sort of scenario where security agents have prevented an arrest, um, you know, of a prominent or a former mm. government official yeah. is when the EFCC tried to arrest a uh, former DSS DG. Uh, and then the, uh, the DSS officials who were attached to him said, no, this is not how we're going to proceed on this matter. There was a standoff between DSS officials and the EFCC officials. 
in this scenario now, there are big questions as to whether policemen, because don't forget, sometimes EFCC officials are also policemen. Can one set of policemen, you know, stand <laughs> against another set of policemen and say, you know, you cannot effect an arrest? This is not in Kogise. This is not in Lokoja. This is in Abuja, the federal capital territory. All of the drama we witnessed yesterday was not in Lokoja. It happened right here in the federal capital territory. So there have been big questions being asked as to what exactly transpired and, you know, whether there was any, uh, you know, there was any room for what 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 transpired yesterday and then at some point because the efcc officials themselves cordon of the streets leading off uh, up to the governor's house but well, we understand that when the current governor of hogi state came in his own vehicle the roads were open to let him through um i guess they were just maybe everyone was just trying to be careful yesterday maybe mm. that was all, because if efcc really wanted to go through uh, there are a number of things that would have happened yesterday, hmm. Chamberlain, but okay. it, it might not have happened without casualties. And oh. maybe that was certainly not going to be needed. But this certainly doesn't, it yeah. says a lot about our country. It says a lot about our, our institutions. It says a lot about, you know, the leaders that we have. Um, the big questions really on every front. And that's what we're here to dig this morning. Hmm. All we're doing right now is giving you a background as to what transpired yesterday. Alright, so let's take you through this report. Have a look. Benghazi Street at Wuse Zone 4 in the Federal Capital Territory was today cordoned off by armed operatives of the EFCC who laid siege as early as 9 o'clock this morning to arrest the former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello. <laughs> Loyalists and aides of the former governor, including police officers, are seen mounting a resistance, forcing operatives of the EFCC to mount watch a few meters away. Moments later, more supporters and loyalists to Yahaya Bello arrive in show of solidarity. However, the former governor remains locked inside his residence. For the EFCC still mountain watch, hours later, the current governor of Kogi State, Usman Ododo, arrives to the cheer of supporters. Our attempts to speak with the EFCC team lead proved abortive, but some supporters of the former governor were quite assertive, alleging witch hunt. It's clear already that it is the whole thing is politically motivated as it is now. You can see it. Every normal human being can interpret what is happening now. The former governor just paid a visit to Mr. President just a day before yesterday. And today, this attack came. It's clear. You can read it. You can read within the line. I am not sure those guys are from uh, EFCC because there is a substituting court order. I am sure they have regard for rule of law. And I don't think uh, they are above the law. So I have, um, I have my doubt. I have my reservation. Maybe they are not from EFCC. <laughs> Finally, Governor Usman Ododo departs the premises after about five hours of the EFCC officials' wait. A little while later, the EFCC officials also depart. It's been seven hours since the operatives of the EFCC laid siege here at the premises of the former governor of Kogi State, Mr. Yahaya Bello. The EFCC operatives have now left the premises without the uh, former governor in their custody. 
Meanwhile, there are several court documents that have emerged. While the High Court in Lokoja has issued a restraining order on the EFCC as it concerns arresting the former governor, a federal High Court in Abuja has granted the EFCC an arrest warrant for the former governor preparatory to his arraignment. All right, let's go to Mr. Femi following at this morning. Good morning and thank you for joining us. So apologies, we hope we sorted all of that. So go ahead and tell us because we hear in that report, some officials they're saying they're not sure that those who came there were from EFCC. So uh, what's your impression of what is going on, especially from the courts having written that no court can stop the prosecution of the human governor? Well, um, what happened yesterday uh, was very unfortunate. And uh, I'm very, very confident that the matter will be properly handled in line with the provisions of the law. Uh, I think about June or July last year, there was a clash between the officials of the EFCC and the State Security Service on Awolowo Road in Ikoyi, Lagos. And the Bolatinobo administration made it clear that such clashes will not be allowed under this administration. I think what happened yesterday, uh, the government will have to come out very clearly and make the point abundantly clear that the rule of law has to operate in Nigeria. And once a government has fidelity to the rule of law, <laughs> police officers, state security officers cannot prevent the EFCC from carrying out its statutory functions, more so when a trial court had given that body a warrant to bring a suspect to court because a charge had been filed alleging the theft of over 80 billion. So it is in, in the interest of Governor Yaya Belu to rush to court and defend his name. But once your immunity has expired as a governor, you cannot go to a court and have it extended indefinitely. That is the position of our law. The Supreme Court has made it clear that uh, a federal high court cannot be prevented by state high court from trying a citizen because both courts have coordinate jurisdiction. So, in other words, Mr. Yayabelo's lawyer cannot go to the federal high court and say, our client will not come because there is another of a Kogi state high court that he should not be arrested or prosecuted. No! The Supreme Court made this point in the case of uh, 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 ex-Governor Jikalu and the EFCC. In the case of Uazorike and the FRN, that the order of a coordinate, a court of coordinate jurisdiction cannot prevent a trial court from putting any citizen on trial. Once a charge has been filed, in the appropriate court, you cannot say you are not going to court. Or uh, uh, hire security officials to prevent either the EFCC or the police or any other agency from okay. carrying out so, functions, statutory so, functions. All right, so having said that, do we, isn't the procedure such that, uh, because some of those in the report, the officials of the Kogi State government were saying they are not sure if they are from EFCC because there's a court judgment. So, yes, we will hear what you said, but are they not supposed to vacate that order and then proceed, or are they supposed to disregard it and proceed with the arrest and prosecution of the former governor? You, you know, uh, Chamberlain, uh, once a court, a criminal court, has ordered the arrest of any citizen or that any citizen be brought before it. If you have any objection to that order, you have to go to that court and 
say why you are not going to come. But you cannot hire people to prevent the enforcement of a, another, a valid and subsisting order of a court in Nigeria. Because the danger is that we are, you know, we're, we're having a policy that permits two types of legal systems, criminal justice systems, one for the poor and one for the rich. And that is against the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. So, uh, I'm just uh, looking at the pictures once more. And, you know, oftentimes uh, we've been told that, you know, officials of the EFCC are drawn from the rank and file of the Nigerian police. Interestingly, yesterday, the Nigerian police were the people involved in actually stopping the effect of this arrest. What do you think should be, uh, what conversation should be happening in this regard? Well, I, 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 I strongly believe that the Inspector General of Police uh, will have to take certain actions. The first is that all the police officers involved in the macabre dance yesterday will have to be recalled and charged with obstruction of justice because that was what happened yesterday. And no security officer in Nigeria has the power to frustrate the EFCC or any other lawful agency from performing its statutory functions. The Supreme Court has made the point that nobody in Nigeria, apart from the president and sitting governors, the sitting president and governors that enjoy immunity, any other citizen cannot be shielded by the police from prosecution. That is the law. So this is not the first time. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise we are violating the constitution by shielding certain suspects from asking, from going to court to defend themselves while other citizens are being railroaded to jail. Fire the courts. You cannot have, you cannot be allowed. So I will expect the Inspector General of Police to ensure that the order of the Federal High Court, that Mr. Bello Yaya be brought to the Federal, to the court for arraignment, is carried out. Otherwise, it is going to be a dangerous precedent whereby federal suspects, armed robbery suspects, and go to court and say, I don't want to be tried. And you hire security people or uh, talks and talks to prevent the EFCC or even the police from carrying out their statutory duties. Well, this is not the first time we've seen this sort of injunctions being uh, received by people who once occupied office. Uh, there's always been that famous perpetual injunction, uh, which was ob obtained by former governor of River State, um, which I, I, it's, it's unclear if the EFCC ever obtained uh, something to vacate that particular injunction. But that seemed to have set a precedence for what we now began to see much later by other people trying to get, you know, court injunctions prevent themselves from being arrested. How dangerous a precedence do you think that, that really set for us? Frankly speaking, uh, it is tantamount to judicial rascality for judges in Nigeria. Mr. Falano, I'm afraid you're muted. Mr. Falano, if you can hear me, you're muted. Kindly unmute, please. What, what will have to happen here? Thank you. From the information at my disposal, one of the NGOs 
one of the civil liberty organizations has decided to petition the National Judicial Council in respect of this matter. Because we can't go online whereby a court will say uh, the case in Kogi is a civil case. The case before the federal court in Abuja is a criminal case. And what the court is saying, what the Supreme Court is saying, is that yes, you have the right to have your fundamental rights respected. But once there is reasonable suspicion that an offense has been committed, by virtue of Section 35 of the Constitution, you can be arrested and brought to court. So I believe that this should be the last time that this embarrassing situation will be allowed in this country. The government that has ordered this government has directed all security agencies in the country to stop this this type of clash because it, it, it is it is it is unwarranted it is unnecessary you are asked to protect a former governor or a sitting governor not to frustrate an agency of the government like the fcc from performing its own functions that is the position so and that is why we must yeah, the, the other Nigerian angle. lawyers, the Nigerian Bar Association, the NJC will have to rise to the occasion okay. so that our country will not be further exposed to ridicule okay, so before the Committee of Nations. The other aspect is, as it is the case now, when you talk about obstruction of justice, uh, the role that the current governor of Kogi State played, because there were images uh, that suggested that he got in there i mean i think the statement from the commission too said they spirited the governor out of the premises and as such they frowned at any obstruction mr Falana, can you hear me okay so i'm asking um what what do you think i i, I hope you can hear me mr father are you still there we brought to trial okay so that that will suffer as a deterrent to others who may want to frustrate the execution of the law. I mean, a sitting governor, a sitting president in Nigeria can be investigated. And that is the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Fawa Emi and the Inspector General of Police, All which right. cannot be done. Because okay, so of Section 305 of the Constitution so is that you cannot arrest and prosecute them. But the Supreme Court has said in that case, that the investigation must be concluded. Either the report is sent to the House of Assembly or the National Assembly, as the case may be, or the agency will keep the report. When the man completes his term of office, then you can file a charge against him. And the Supreme Court warned in that case that certain evidence may be destroyed if investigation is not conducted. In this case, why Governor... Uh, 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 when Mr. Yayabelo was in office, the investigation was, was conducted. The investigation was conducted in this case. And as soon as he left office, uh, by the time his immunity expired by a fluxion of time, the EFCC filed a charge. I'm not a charge at the file. His name was then added. And the court consequently made an order that he be brought to court for arraignment. That has to be done. So, Mr. The Falana, will have to so make it tell us then, what happens to what happens to Kogi State Governor if he spirited the governor out of that premises? Is that tantamount to obstruction of justice? Since he's got immunity, what can happen to him? Can you hear me, Mr. Fadana? I'm asking the, the role that the Kogi State governor, the current governor, is said to have played. If he spirited the former governor out of the premises, is that tantamount to obstruction of justice? And since he's got immunity, what can happen in that case? Chamberlain, I didn't hear that. 
So the role of the current governor of Kogi State, if he was the one that took the former governor out of the place while he was trying to be arrested, is that tantamount to obstruction of justice? He's got immunity. What happens to him? Please, can you come again? I didn't quite hear that question. Okay, so I'm talking about the role that the Kogi governor played. Was he obstructing justice and his immunity cannot be waived? So what happens in that area, in that regard? Uh, as far as this matter is concerned, a charge is pending in the Federal High Court. The court has made an order that Mr. Yaya Bello be brought to court. I am very confident that the court will insist that uh, the suspect be arraigned in court. And if his lawyers, if Mr. Bello has any objection to that order, it is perfectly in order to approach the Federal High Court and to convince the court why it should not be tried for allegedly diverting the sum of 80 billion naira from the coffers of a poor state like Kogi. This is a very simple and straightforward matter. He ran away yesterday, but he cannot run away forever. I, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not sure that the question has been answered, I, I, Mr. Fala. No, the, the question of I don't know if you can hear me, uh, Mr. Fala. No, the question of whether or not what happens to the sitting governor if indeed he was the one that took the the former governor out of his residence for him to avoid the arrest by the EFCC. What happens to that particular individual? Well. Because the sitting governor currently enjoys immunity under the Constitution, uh, not much can be done to him for now. But again, I'm taking part, I'm taking a dominant part in the obstruction of justice that occurred in Abuja yesterday. There is no statute of limitation with respect to that offense. The EFCC will have to conduct an investigation as regards what happened yesterday. And at the appropriate time, the, the sitting governor, once he loses his immunity, and be charged. But as I've said, he used certain agents who do not enjoy immunity, unfortunately for them, all the security officers involved in colluding, all the security officers that colluded with the sitting governor to prevent the EFCC from arresting a criminal suspect can be charged right away with obstruction of justice so that this ugly incident will not repeat itself. Well, one of the challenges that uh, one might also raise from there is the kind of communication that has gone out about this particular matter. As you said, on the one hand, it's a civil case. The other, on the other hand, is a criminal case. And there are some of those people at the venue yesterday, at the, that house yesterday, saying look, that the EFCC was obstructed, was overruling or overturning a court decision when it went and besieged the house of the former governor right there. Um, of course, many of them knew of a subsisting order, but they didn't know the circumstances of, of both. And of course, whatever rhetoric is put out is what people go with. Now, in that light, what should the communication be going forward? And who should be putting this out so that people have a good understanding of the circumstances around this particular case? Okay. What happened here was that the former governor approached the Kogi State High Court that my fundamental right to liberty should not be tampered with by the EFCC. No court, and the court in Kogi could not have said that if there is reasonable suspicion that an offense has been committed, the suspect should not be charged. Now, EFCC went to that house and with another of the federal high court, which is pending, which is subsisting, 
valid order. The EFCC was directed by the Federal High Court. Go and bring the suspect for the purpose of his arraignment. The day you will recall last year, when a former governor, the same governor, Okrocha, uh, uh, resisted arrest, the EFCC broke into the house in line with the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and took him out and arraigned him in court. I am very, very confident that in this case, once the EFCC has been directed by the Federal High Court to, arrest, to bring Mr. Bello to court, that order, unless it is vacated, either by the Federal High Court or the Court of Appeal, the order will have to be complied with. And I'm saying, in not less than 10 cases, in not less than 10 cases, of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court dealt with this situation. And all the decisions are to the fact that no court, no court can turn any citizen into an outlaw. In fact, the court is saying, how dare you to come to court and say, I don't want to be prosecuted. If there is reasonable suspicion that an offense has been committed, in this case, a charge has been filed in court, alleging the criminal diversion of over 80 billion naira. Hmm. That charge is pending. And the court okay. has said, this on this charge. Okay. And what? the processes <clears throat> are attached. I am ordering you to go and bring this suspect for arraignment. Okay. So, uh, just a so quick you, one. Uh, for any um, high court, yes. To disregard the judgments of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal on this matter, it's a very serious matter that will have to be dealt with. Otherwise, now that brings the to the issue. Where, yeah. Yes, now, I, we, I'm sure you are aware of an upcoming Justice Sector Reform Summit uh, uh, towards the end of this month. In what way do you see that? upcoming justice sector reform summit addressing the issues that have been raised directly no you see we cannot continue to reform the law where the stamp provisions of the law have been disregarded by a section of the community by members of the ruling class it is not a general problem in nigeria and you know <laughs> this is the painful aspect of it if a common person is involved in a crime, the police, state security service, TFCC and the rest of them, who pants on the person, who pants on him. Uh -huh. But you see, when a big man is involved, you will write a polite letter. Please, you are invited to our office to be interviewed by so 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 and so and so what the rich people do what do they do they will take that court that letter to the court oh that my fundamental right to liberty is going to be infringed upon so can you restrain the agency that has invited me but i am saying the supreme court and the courts of appeal have described such conduct as illegal and unconstitutional and that every suspect must be taken to the appropriate court in Nigeria. Okay. If another is made against you by a, a criminal court, you don't go to another court to invalidate the order because they have coordinate jurisdiction. What okay. you do is to approach that court and say, my Lord, for this reason and for that reason, the order made against me should be set aside. So we right. don't need we don't what? need any reform here. What, Mr. Falano, the provisions just what, of the this, this one question are, are very clear. Yeah. 
This one question um, uh, it borders on whether or not it is going to happen. The, it's the, today that the EFCC is supposed to arraign uh, Mr. Bello. On the one hand, do you see him appearing in court today? On the other hand, if he does <laughs> not appear, just a second, just a second. On the other hand, if he does not appear in court today, what are the consequences? I will be completely flabbergasted. If Mr. Yaya Bello is not producing court today, the system cannot allow it. But if for any reason it's not producing court today, I, I am I am reasonably sure that the court will grant an adjournment and reiterate this order to have him produced. It's as simple as that. Nobody in Nigeria has ever successfully prevented his arraignment before the court of competent jurisdiction. And I'm talking of cases that have been decided in this area. So it's not a new area. You don't need any reform. It is to enforce the provisions of the law mm. and the orders of the court on this matter. Now, well, Mr. Valano, you, you, you spoke about something earlier about the officers of the law that were on both sides of the divide. Mark, I raised that question with you earlier. What should be the um, SOP? What should be the MO for that kind of situation? On the one hand, we have orderlies with the former governor. We have orderlies, uh, security um, details with the governor and we have security details of course who came to enforce a court a, a, a court a court order what are the dynamics there because at the end of the day it seems like we're just putting these guys the, the security agents are log ahead they are there each one of them to do their jobs so what should be the mo here for the one hand, the orderlies with the former governor, the security detail of the governor, and the security agencies who came to effect a court order. Well, for me, I, I think the leadership of the EFCC must be commended for restraining its officers from em uh, employing force to carry out the order of the court. It will have been, it will have been in order. Uh, there was an incident in America where a criminal suspect refused, insisted arrest. The security agency set fire on the house. Yes. And of course, the criminal had to uh, uh, run out and was arrested. In Nigeria, under the administration of criminal justice, Act, once a criminal suspect is straight to a house, Security agencies, I mean, uh, even the police and other empowered by law to invade the house and bring him or her out, take him to court. In this case, the officers that colluded with the sitting governor to resist, to prevent the arrest of Mr. Yaya Bello, as I said earlier, have committed an offense. It is called obstruction of justice. Those officers are liable to be arrested and prosecuted. And that has to be done so that the, the security agencies in Nigeria will know that we are not operating in a banana republic. This is a country that loudly proclaims to operate under the rule of law. There's no provision for this type of rascality that occurred yesterday. Again, as I said, the FCC deserves commendation for not engaging in a physical combat with the police officers that prevented the arrest. Otherwise, it will have been it will have been a different matter entirely. All right, uh, Mr. Femi Falana, senior advocate of Nigeria, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you very much. All right.